Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm just going to show how to set up the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic XS uh, with ASIO drivers to support Steinberg's Cubase. This uh, this process will actually probably work with other ASIO driven software as well, not just necessarily Cubase by Steinberg. Um, and this is the version two um, of the actual DAC, although I don't think that's going to matter. Uh, by the sounds of it, they use a generic driver, uh, Cambridge Audio, for a number of their DAC units. Anyway, yeah, so just quickly, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm doing some mixing of some tracks on Cubase. And for a few weeks, I've got to set up on headphones. And I normally use a Focusrite uh, Scarlett 18 i 20 and I just don't think I was getting a really good enough sound, you know, a good conversion out of the headphone socket. Um, it's either that or the headphones, and I'm using an Bayer 770s, which are great headphones. Anyway, so I went to Rich Sound in Liverpool, and uh, the chap in there, Andy, was brilliant. Didn't try to upsell me on anything, didn't try to like push me into anything. I just simply went in and said to him, listen, I've got up to £200 budget to buy some headphones, uh, hopefully better than what I already had. Went through some of the headphones, didn't really feel that I was getting anything better. So then I decided to test out the Cambridge Audio unit while I was in the shop. And uh, it was awesome. Uh, straight away, immediately, I could recognise a certain a certain difference in it. Anyway, when I got it back, uh, set it up on my little studio system, and uh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's uh, you know a lot of detail. There's a lot of definition. Um, seems to be a very clear base. Stereo imaging's a lot better. And this is compared to the st uh, the headphone out on the Focusrite Scarlett 18 i20. Uh, now. In all honesty, the, the Scarlett is really an audio interface unit for line level and uh, microphones and the actual headphone sockets on it are probably, I'm not saying they're an afterthought, but this the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic is way better. Anyway, so let me get into this. Um, right, I've got a, a Cubase project here, so I'm just going to launch this. Okay, there we go, it's launched. Now, if I start playing through this, I'll just give it a little bit of a, a play. So, the project's there, it's playing through, but we don't have any output coming from the from the DAC Magic. Now, if I go to Devices here, and I'll just clarify that. So, we'll go to Device Settings, or the ASIO setup here, and as you can see, it's just the, the generic low latency ASIO driver and the Focusrite driver. So although the DAC is actually connected to the system, Cubase just won't stand the chance of seeing it. Now, when you first initially put the DAC unit in, it actually goes in as a in what the, I think Cambridge Audio refer to it as USB one mode or something. Um, I think basically it's just class compli uh, class compliancy mode when it initially goes in, which basically just means it's you know it, it'll be seen by anything that you plug it into, PC, Mac, whatever, um, but not necessarily with anything that needs specialist drivers such as ASIO. So what we'll do, we'll exit Cubase here. Now hold on. Now I'm going to put a link in the descriptions below for the website where you can go down uh, download the drivers so i've actually got the drivers here so what we'll do let's launch the driver is it hidden behind there yes it is okay right so <clears throat> this is now loading in so that's the driver completed so what we'll do here we'll just double check so we're going to go down and look for Cambridge Audio and there we go now that's now querying the uh, the DAC unit 
although it hasn't seen it by the looks of it just yet. So what we'll do, we'll do a restart on the system. I mean, I suggest you do a restart after installing any hardware anyway. Sometimes it's not necessary, but just to be safe, it's always best to do it. So I'll restart it and then I'll bring it back up again. Okay, so we've booted back in after the initial install of the driver. So let's go back now and have a look. So go back down to Cambridge Audio on the programs list. And then we'll launch the, the, the control panel software for the DAC. And it's now, it's still saying it's not there. Now this isn't, this isn't necessarily a problem um, because this would, gen this would generally just signify that the initially you're in mode one on the DAC. So what you need to do now is hold down the two buttons on the DAC unit, the, the plus and the minus volume button. So I'll just do that as I'm talking. And what you do, you just hold that down for just like a few seconds. And as you could hear there, there was confirmation of a system change. So hold it down for about five seconds or so. I think it says three seconds in the manual. And then what that does, it changes the hardware into what it considers is, is a USB 2 mode. Uh, now this basically th then uses the driver that's been installed. So if we go back now and have a look again. There we go. So it's now telling us that the DAC Magic X XS is in, well, it says two here. I don't know if this means version two or, or whether this means USB two mode, but nonetheless, it's now active. And as we can see here, it's at 48 kilohertz, which is the Windows system setting for that. So now what we'll do, we'll go back and we'll launch this Cubase project. Just have to bear with, it, bear, bear with us a second here while this loads up and stuff. It's actually a full mix and there's a fair few things on it. So it might take a short while to load. Okay. Now as you can see here, Eddie is, not Eddie is, <laughs> Eddie is me video software, Cubase, is now giving us the option for the generic low latency driver, the Focusrite driver, and now it's now picked up the ASIO driver for the uh, for the Cambridge uh, DAC unit, so we'll OK that. Yeah, this is just going to take a few more seconds just to load up anyway. There we go, so we're in. So now what we do, go to Devices, go to Device Setup, and then in here you've got VST Audio System, click on that. Now it's automatically picked the, um, the the DAC up for us, but what would happen if it didn't automatically pick it up? You just click into the list here and select them. I mean, we'd already selected this earlier as it as it booted in just before, but sometimes uh, Cubase just doesn't always pick up what the, uh, everything that you tell it to do from the outset. So sometimes it is necessary to come into this uh, into this ASIO driver selector here. So it's selected. We'll click OK on that. And then what we'll do if we go to VST Connections. Oops, where's it gone? There we go. So VST Connections. And now what, it, what it's telling us here is that the device we're using is the, is the DAC unit. And we're using its left and its right outputs. Now, what I'll do, I'll just play this track a bit. You know, you won't hear anything but... If I if I bring the headphones hold on, I'm just gonna have to hide the DAC up. Okay, so that sound is actually coming out of the headphones, which are on, which is uh, now on the DAC, which uh, Cubase is rooted to. Uh, okay, yeah. So hopefully this will help people if they need to set up the ASIO driver for the DAC unit. Um, the one thing I would say though, if um, if you're just using uh, kind of like you know half decent uh, you know audio interfaces, things like the Scarlet Range and stuff like that, it's um, it's actually well worth it for Mixdown to use one of these DACs. I can't explain to you unless you unless you try one out yourself just how clear you can actually hear your mixes. 
there's a lot more definition than what I'm getting to the Focusrite uh, headphone output. And like I said, the separation, um, it seems better as well for audio, uh, sorry, for stereo placements and whatnot. So when it actually comes down to doing your final mixes and you just need to check a few balances of things in headphones or you need to just make sure that you've got your, your stereo where you think it's, it should be and whatnot and all your pan sources and all the rest of it, I really, really couldn't recommend enough this unit. Um, it's absolutely awesome. And if you're on the Merseyside area or anywhere close by, I'd hop along to Richardson and Liverpool as well. The chap I spoke to was Andy, but anytime I buy anything from Richard and Liverpool, they're all they're all cool in there anyway. Okay, so there we go. Um, yeah, call back shortly, and I should have a few more uh, things to do with Cubase, and I might be doing another little review on the Dach Magic unit. All right, thanks very much. Take care. Goodbye now.